Now, more than 100 uh, water supplies across the country have been hit with water restrictions or outages, and Irish Water are warning that these restrictions could continue for the foreseeable future, possibly even into the autumn, if the dry conditions continue. Now, temperatures are expected to stay in the high 20s today and will continue into next week. Joining me with that story and others making the news this morning are KFM Shane Beatty and Ellen Gunning, Director of the Irish Academy of Public Relations. Good morning to you both. Um, now, I don't want to reopen the water charges uh, um, debate. But it looks like our chickens uh, could be, sorry, ducks could be coming home to roost in this case, Ellen. Um, this is part and parcel of, you know, why water charges are supposed to be introduced. I know people will say, oh, well, this is unfeasible. It's once in a decade type of weather. But what it is doing is it is highlighting just how creaky and not fit for purpose our infrastructure is. Our infrastructure isn't fit for purpose at all. And there are two problems with it. One is the water charges. I've actually always supported water charges, but I hate the idea that you should pay a house charge. My house doesn't do anything. It doesn't consume anything. I don't know why I should pay a, a property tax. But a water charge makes sense um, to me because we, I actually consume water and somebody needs to actually clean it and run it through the pipes. But I think the issue is much bigger than water charges, to be honest. I think if you look at the problem, Irish Water are saying they can produce 610,000 litres. 610 million litres. Million, million yeah. litres a day and that in the last two days we've either hit that or gone beyond it. So that they're at stretch to capacity. We're looking at taking water from the Shannon over to Dublin. I think we, the government really needs to address the issue long term. And I, I sort of feel that if you look at something like water or housing or health, the issues are much bigger than a single government. They're much bigger than two or three years. It needs a plan that everybody signs up to, that all parties agree to and say, look, over the next 20 years, this is how we resolve the infrastructure. And I think they need to put, they need to pipe water from uh, Shannon to Dublin. They need to work on all of those pipes. They need to fix all the leaks. They probably need to apply a water charge, but I think it takes much, it's, it's not a political battle that can be fought every three or four years. It's too big an issue. And I know we've only had a heat wave for three or four days, which is ridiculous. And we're now running out of water, but what if this lasts for a month or two? Shane, you're, uh, you broadcast to a you know, largely agricultural um, 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 county. Um, is, are the problems worse there? Um, it's, it's just amazing because they were already on the back foot because of the snow and the very poor winter and spring. Uh, and this was the time when literally you try and make hay when the sun shines, but you do need a bit of water to make hay when the sun shines as well. Uh, so they are certainly struggling, absolutely, because uh, the, the fodder crisis is taking hold and obviously they're worrying even now about into next winter, what are they going to do as well? So it certainly is taking hold. And look, the fact is you just need water to come from the sky, quite literally, through rain. That's what we need. But it is just extraordinary in this country. I mean, you know, we're surrounded by water. where we ra It rains here so however many hundred days a year or whatever and think we've three or four days of sunshine and suddenly we have a water crisis. It is just extraordinary. And now they're talking about, I mean, instead of water charges, uh, the, the short-term solution seems to be they're going to bring in a hose pipe ban. So you won't be able to water your garden, wash your car, uh, and if you are caught doing that, now I don't know, do we have enough guards to go around checking people in their gardens, see what they're watering, but we'll have to find them €125. Euro. That's what they're talking I about. I said to you before I came on air yesterday, I was listening to the news on my way home at lunchtime, we were talking about water restrictions, I saw two people watering their gardens, and I saw one person having their cobble lock power host. Yeah, great day to and do it. In the meantime, it. the yeah. radio is, is, is going, uh, you, you know, we're going to have water sh shortages. Yeah. And I'm just trying to think to myself, what bit of, we have a heat wave and we need to conserve water, but do people not understand? Yeah, there's probably an element of cynicism. Firstly, in that, well, do I really matter? I'm only one person. And also, when you think about 60% of our water is hemorrhaged out through the creaking uh, system, that, you know, we're, we're leaking an awful lot of water here that people probably think, well, is there really a point in doing it? But yes, the message would be, a point in don't doing wash. It. <laughs> but they themselves personally doing it. Don't wash your cobble locking. Don't get your car washed. And the private businesses as well, apparently, have been really good in recent days. Irish Water say that a lot of them have got on board. Publicly, they've said it. Privately, they've said to Irish Water, we're up for this and we're going to give you a, a it, dig out. It appears what happened on Monday was that people were very good and Irish Water said, oh, thank you very much, you've been very good. And people then went, oh, we've been very good. We, can, <laughs> we don't need to do that today. And then suddenly it shot up because one of the, 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 the debates on the news yesterday was, is, 
Why was there suddenly a, 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 you know, a 10 million litre increase in the Dublin area? But anyway, you know, the crazy thing, sorry, with, um, John Paul Phelan, the, the junior minister, was saying he, he was the one who started this idea of a hosepipe ban and a fine and all that kind of stuff. And I just found myself thinking, this is common sense. And it's neighbours saying to other neighbours, excuse me, you really shouldn't be watering your grass. Mm. I think there's a huge... I, I think there's too much of the nanny state. To which state the answer of, will be, mind your own bloody business. Possibly, but if enough people said it to you, well, you mightn't do it. Public okay. shaming could work. Public shaming could... You um, know, if a neighbour went around and said, stop watering your garden, it might work, uh, more so than a ban. Let's move to, uh, to, to Brussels. Uh, this June summit was supposed to be where we, uh, you know, we got clarity from the British government about Brexit and we were going to deal with it. Um, now, obviously, that's going to get pushed to the 11th hour in October. But they did, uh, they were up all night. I think they finished at about four o'clock. And uh, Merkel said during the course of her address that migration is going to be the single biggest uh, problem that Europe will face and that it could possibly be the thing that brings it down. It's the biggest problem facing her. She took in a million migrants. Yeah, I was just saying, is it the biggest problem facing her political career or the EU in general? I think it's both. I think it is a, the biggest problem facing her. I think she, if she doesn't come back with some sort of a solution, um, her she is under, going to pull the plug. She's under terrible pressure. She's going to lose power. But I think for Europe, they, they've been dodging this for ages. I know from Italian colleagues that um, they will tell you that in Italy, they really feel that they're at bursting point with the number of migrants who are coming in. They just physically cannot cope. They don't have an infrastructure that can cope with this volume of people. And the Italians feel that the rest of Europe has said for so long as the Italians keep allowing the ships in, it's their problem, not ours. We'll, we'll give them money, but we won't give them any real help to deal with it. So I think this is the first time that Europe has actually honestly said, maybe we need to deal with it. Now, having said that, I think they kicked the can back down the road again. And they now, they're now talking about migrant centres on a voluntary basis in is it Greece and Italy or other countries that might choose to take them? I don't think they've really they're come up with They're calling them screening centres, um, um, Shane. And I was just thinking, right, if you've got uh, a couple of 500, 1,000, <clears throat> 2,000 people coming in and you've got to screen them. You've got to screen them for where they're from, um, <clears throat> why are they leaving, um, their physical health, um, identity, etc., etc., etc. They'll be coming from sub-Saharan Africa in a lot of cases. There'll be language difficulties. So just the sheer logistics of doing that means that these people are going to be in these screening centres for a couple of days. So therefore mm. it becomes a camp. Therefore it becomes what? Direct provision? Uh, uh, an internment camp and how long before somebody calls that a concentration camp because until such time as they're screened they can't be left out which means they're enclosed which means they're restricted which effectively makes it a prison doesn't it? It does but well, it depends how long that would last for I mean obviously they, you can't you just can't have the open territory here where people can go in and arrive so it would depend how long now the worrying thing is in Ireland we've seen how long it takes someone to go through the direct provision system so you'd hope that it could be sorted out quicker than that um, the, the identity is a big thing as well because an awful lot of people arrive and they simply don't have the documentation they don't have a way of proving who they are so that makes it really really difficult for the authorities and to we do sort know out. that ISIS sent sleepers in uh, yeah. via that route before. I, know. I mean, it's, long, it's term, a... the, long term, the, the, the idea is, is that we, they would set up these camps in Africa or in African countries. Before so, they before go. Yeah, so there'd be no need for them to leave, which is basically kind of the deal that we did with Turkey, isn't it? Warehouse them there Give rather them than money. let them into Europe. Give Turkey money <clears> and let them sort out the problem, essentially. I did think it was interesting, Leo Varadkar said, if we want to continue uh, getting EU support on Brexit, we're going to have to play our part on migration. And it'll be interesting to see what that means. They're lovely words but what does that actually mean? How many? I mean, we already committed to taking in so many migrants and we've barely taken how that many, number How many Syrians have we taken in so far? I could question. I, I could think they question. offered to take 45 off the last boat. Yeah. 25, I think. I think 45 is being generous. I think it was only 25. <sighs> but this flares out. I mean, two years ago, this was the crisis. Now it's crisis again. They're going to have to do something to sort it out once and for all. Okay, okay listen, uh, thank you both very much indeed.